This is KGW News at 11. And we begin here at 11 with another night of unrest in Portland. A group of protesters have gathered by the Portland Police East Precinct. Police say the protesters took two dumpsters in the street near the police vehicle entry and exit doors. They declared this an unlawful assembly about a half hour ago. Police are warning protesters to move out of the area and say they may be arrested if they don't. No word yet on any arrests. This comes after Portland police shot and killed a man in Lentz Park on Friday morning. Today, police identified the officer involved as Zachary DeLong, an eight year veteran of the bureau. We also now know that 46 year old Robert Douglas Delgado was the man killed in the incident. His family provided this picture of him. Officers were called to the park yesterday morning on reports of a person pointing a gun. When they arrived, police say they confronted the person they believed was responsible for the call. And at some point, officer officers used both lethal and less lethal force. Now that shooting sparked a day full of protests Friday and a night of action that was eventually declared a riot. Crystal Kumwe has those details and heard from some people cleaning up the damage. A group of about 100 people gathered at Salmon Street Springs and ended up downtown at the Justice Center. Police say that group was peaceful. They did not require police contact and dispersed on their own. A separate group of about 100 people gathered at Director Park and started marching at 9.30 p.m. Friday, and that's when the destruction started. When the vandalism began, police say people set multiple fires at various locations. The police declared it a riot once the crowd started smashing windows throughout downtown Portland. Saturday morning, the people at First Christian Church were picking up the pieces. Right now we're putting up plywood to cover damage to our windows. The church on Southwest Park, which provides meals to thousands in need, put up signs like love one another on their now broken windows. Lead pastor Cynthia Dobson McBride says the messages embody the church's mission of love and unity. She says she doesn't believe the church was specifically targeted. Sometimes when windows are broken in a riot, it's not a specific uh, statement by one individual. It's more people who seem to be caught up in the angst of the moment. This is the second time First Christian Church has been damaged in the last year. The cost of the repairs add to the struggle the church already faces in the pandemic. I felt frustrated because even just the effort of putting plywood up and knowing we have to repair windows again uh, takes funding away from the important work we do to feed the vulnerable. Not far from the church, the Oregon Historical Society was also damaged and had their windows smashed for the second time in a year. Here we are again. It is. Um depressing on many levels. Kerry Timchuk is the museum's director. He says after the last time, they reinforced doors and windows to help keep people out. After the last incident, we invested in windows that were uh, impenetrable, uh, so they weren't able to get in as they did last time and throw flares into the building or uh, steal things, which they did last time. Though he went on to say that fixing the damage will cost several thousand dollars. The museum and church will both remain open, and they both believe there has to be a better way to solve problems in our community other than violence. If history teaches us anything, it's that vandalism and violence are not the answer. Uh, talking and conversation, working together uh, is the answer. There are a lot of tensions across the country and around the world right now. And we need to find a better way to move forward together to resolve injustices and to do so without violence. Police say three people involved in the riot have been arrested, booked and charged. In downtown Portland, Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt condemned the violence last night in the city. He said in part in a statement, the deliberate and criminal actions of individuals rioting in downtown Portland on Friday night significantly endangered life and property. It is unacceptable. This destruction does not align with community values and has no legitimacy. It is harming our city, county and state. He went on to say that multiple criminal investigations are underway to catch those committing violent acts.
We have an update on the Niper fire that started yesterday afternoon in Clackamas County. Firefighters were called to an area near Oregon City yesterday around one when the flames erupted. At one point, at least 17 homes were threatened by the fire and several people were evacuated. Today, Clackamas Fire sent out a message on Twitter saying crews continue to put out hot spots and there is no current threat to nearby homes. The federal government is helping pay for you to get vaccinated from COVID-19, but many people are wondering why they're being asked to show proof of insurance when getting the shot. Well, experts say the federal assistance is only paying for the vaccine itself, and you're being asked to show your insurance card to pay for the person administering the shot. You likely won't even know if your provider was charged. If you don't have insurance, you still get the dose, but there is a good reason your insurance company wants to know if you've been inoculated. And it's important for us as insurance companies to know who's received their immunization and who hasn't. If you haven't received your immunization, we'll make a point of trying to reach out to you, encourage you to get that shot as well. If you don't have insurance but still want the vaccine, experts suggest you look to mobile clinics like the ones through Medical Clinics International. They're administering shots for free with the help of Regents. And a quick look at the number of cases reported today. Oregon says 888 people were diagnosed. That's the most since early February. Case numbers have been rising again for weeks now, but deaths have remained low throughout. Multnomah County reported the highest number of new cases today with 161. Washington County followed with 103 and Clackamas County has 96.